It's day 22 of the Body Shaping for Women Over 50 series and today is a push day. Grab your dumbbells and let's go. All right, killer bees, let's get moving and grooving. Get all your dumbbells all the way out of the way and let's get started with some arm circles with high knees. And yes, yes indeed, it's push day and that means that we have all the dumbbells out. You guys, you guys, you ready? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I think I say this every single week on push day. I have spent my day mostly anticipating, excitedly anticipating, and also totally procrastinating today's workout. It's a push day. That means it's going to be tough. That means that you are going to get some, probably some mental and maybe even physical pushback from doing this kind of work. That's why we do it once a week. And that's why it's so good for us. We are pushing to our limits today. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle-aged fitness friend, and sometimes I procrastinate workouts when I know they're going to be tough like today. You guys, here's what it looks like. I've got the handy-dandy gym boss set for what sounds like a pretty reasonable interval. Honestly, it's 50 seconds of work and 20 seconds of rest, but I already know because I know that's going to be a really relentless workout. I want to make sure that we are nice and warmed up and that you are ready to make some decisions. Get out all your dumbbells. Make sure that you have even something that sounds like it's going to be too light or something that sounds like it's going to be too heavy. You can always, always, always change your weights, especially you. You have the pause button right there. So you can make this workout work however you want it to. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. I I will be choosing heavy weights, heavy for me, because it's a push day. And I've already kind of gone through the list. I do encourage you actually to open up the description box and look through the list of exercises and kind of have, kind of have a mental construct for how you think the day is going to go and what weights you might choose. Um, if you are on, if you're watching on TV, you can't open up the description box. You need to be on mobile or desktop to be able to do that. And while you're there in the description box, make sure that you download the information resource that goes along with this workout and this program because it explains everything about how we're doing Doing what we're doing and why we're doing it. You guys, <sighs> we're pushing. We're pushing. It's happening. Here's what it looks like. I already told you what it looks like. Here's what we're going to do next. <laughs> we're going to do some welcome to my homes. I'm, I'm distracted by my own procrastination today, honestly. I know, I know how good push day feels afterwards. This is the funny thing about push day. I know how good I'm going to feel. I know I'm going to feel strong. I know I'm going to feel accomplished, but there's still something about getting going with it that has its own, its own vibe. It's why I'm dressed the way I'm dressed. Let's talk about that really quickly. Like we do on push day. I've got my favorite pants. I got to look good and I got to feel comfortable. So these are my favorite pants from Ink and Burn. I absolutely love these. They look like jeans. They've got like a little waistband and everything. There, there's a link in the description box like along with everything else. It's not an affiliate thing at all. I just happen to love them. And I've got the most comfortable shirt in the entire world. This is the shirt that I choose for everything all the time, except not very often on camera. I don't think it photographs very well, but it is so soft and so comfortable. And it came in a pack of two for like a ridiculously inexpensive price. And it's wide open in the back. So it's like really comfortable and soft. So, so I am ready. I'm ready to push. How about you? You feeling warmed up? Make sure that you are. Make sure that all of your joints can move through their full range of motion. We are, we are pushing, but we are always, always, always using excellent form. And we're getting started with something that is a gimme for me and maybe not for you. We're doing squats to drinky birds. I am going to choose my, my middle heavy boys. I feel like my middle heavy boys are doable. What we're gonna do is just what it sounds like. We're gonna have the weights on our shoulders. We're gonna come down into a squat. As we come up, we're going directly into a drinky bird. A drinky bird is a single leg deadlift, by the way. And here we go. So we're coming down into a squat. As we come up, weights come down. We come down into a drinky bird. Now here's the thing. This is, it's timed, obviously, because we've got the timer going. We are not trying to get a million of these done. If we get 
what, like maybe two of them done on each side. That's about all I'm anticipating. We are gonna get through my circuit three times. We are using excellent form with our core pulled in super duper tight. As you come up with that back leg, thinking about keeping your toe facing the ground and both hip bones facing forward for this drinky bird, using those gluteal muscles, my friends, and working on balance, of course. Oh my goodness. When it beeps, we're gonna get 20 seconds of rest and we get to think about what's coming up next, which is letter X's. I'm definitely using something lighter. For letter X's, we're gonna make the letter X with our body. So we're going up and out with our dumbbells up to the side, like the top half of a letter X and then the bottom half of a letter X. This is all upper body, which means I needed to go slightly lighter. <laughs> Pull in your core, weights start here in the middle. We're gonna form the top half of the letter X. Back to the middle, this is your resting point. And then the bottom half of the letter X. Your core is pulled in super, super tight. As you are coming up, you're making sure that you're squeezing, squeezing, squeezing from the big muscles in your back. You're using your latissimus dorsi. You're squeezing your shoulder blades together at the top and down here at the bottom, making sure that you're not leaning back into it. I found myself leaning back a little bit on that last one. That's part of excellent form, is keeping your core pulled in and your tailbone tucked underneath you. Now, when you have your arms extended, it's okay to have a little bit of a bend in your elbow. I really don't want you to lock your arms in the extended position, so a little bit of a bend is totally fine. 20 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing reverse lunge curls. And I'm trying to decide if I'm going to use something heavy. I'm going to try something heavier here on round one. I'm already sweaty. Let's see how that goes. Elbows are locked into your waist. We're going to take a big step back. As we step back in that reverse lunge, we're coming up in a biceps curl. So your elbows are staying directly locked onto your waist. We're thinking about excellent form for both the biceps curl and the reverse lunge. It's a lot to think about. I know biceps curls sound so simple, but if you let your elbows come away from your waist, basically at all, you're not really using your biceps as much as you mean to. We're trying really hard not to sway our back at all, and we're coming back into a big enough reverse lunge that your front knee is not over, like in front of your front toe. All 10 toes facing the same direction. A little bit of balance work baked into that one too. We're breathing. Man, I'm super glad not to have to do the last one. 20 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing close squat swings, which means for me, I'm gonna grab one dumbbell and I'm going with my heavy boy because we're gonna grab it the long way. Close squat swings, oh my gosh, this one is super, oh yikes, that's almost undone. Feet are close together. We're coming down in a squat and as we do, we're twisting to one side. As we come up, it brings to about head height and then we're twisting down to the other side. It's all about the grip, I had my grip slightly wrong on that first one. Your arms are straight, but also they are not locked, just like last time. This is the resting position down at the side, which is why I rested there for a second. We're trying to get the weight about as high as your shoulders. It is a momentum-based move, which means that on round two, I'm probably gonna go lighter than this because this got real tough, real fast, and really got my heart rate up. This twist here, ha is using your abs and obliques. 20 seconds of rest coming up next. We're doing high knee peekaboos. Okay, <laughs> okay. Last week's peekaboos scared me forever, but I'm still gonna go with my light big boys. It's just what it sounds like. We're making a peekaboo motion, squeezing our elbows together, pulling our elbows apart. While we do so, we've got one high knee at a time. Really thinking about keeping your core pulled in, squeezing your elbows together as much as possible. It's okay if they don't touch, but when you're squeezing them apart, you're using your big muscles in your back, squeezing your shoulder blades together. This is using both your chest when you pull forward, your back when you pull back, your abs and obliques by pulling up one high knee at a time, and of course, your deep core stabilizers having that balance. 
excellent job making sure you're breathing. I am already shaking and I'm already taking mental notes for round two, where I am probably going to drop weight on every single one of these exercises. This, this is the thing about a push day. We find how much we can push. A split stance row and kickback is next. Actually, I'm gonna keep these. I think that's gonna be perfect. Whichever way you would normally step back into a split stance, go the other way. It doesn't matter because we're going to do both of them, but we're gonna be in a constant split stance for this one. So we're slightly bent over with one foot behind us. We're rowing up to your armpits, squeezing back into a triceps kickback, back to your armpits and down, staying in this exact same split stance the entire time. So really thinking about balance the entire time. All 10 of your toes are facing forward, really thinking about not letting that back leg kick out to the side. That's a compensation. And that is your inner thigh trying to take over for work that your glutes and hamstrings should be doing. Thinking about pulling in your core, of course, squeezing from your big back muscles and then your little triceps while we do that kick back, back to your armpits and down. Awesome job. Up to your armpits, back and come out of it nicely. Okay, coming up next. We're doing a front raise, side raise, side kick, and I'm actually gonna keep these weights for that one too. So we're doing a front raise, side raise. Whichever hand is doing the front raise is the foot that's kicking out to the side. So you, both arms are moving in different planes of motion and we're balancing with a side kick. Take your time. I know the timer is on. It's got me feeling a little bit like we're in a hurry. We're not in a hurry. We're not in a hurry at all for any of these exercises. That's just kind of what I notice when I've got the timer going. It feels like like a hit workout or like we have to hurry. I'd much rather you think about excellent form and take your time. The hurry, unfortunately, is the rest. That's part of how we're burning out today. That's what we do on push day. We burn out our muscles. We get as much work done in relatively small amount of time as we can. Really squeezing rather than shrugging, controlling this motion. <sighs> awesome job. Coming up next, we're doing swinging knees to elbows. I'm gonna grab my medium big boy, just one. You're gonna have the weight held long ways and just rest it in your hands. Oh my gosh, these are twisted apart today, so weird. You're gonna rest it just underneath your chin, elbows pointed forward. We're gonna bring up one high knee towards your opposite elbow, towards the same elbow, and then down again. Lots of balance here, pulling your core. Opposite elbow, swing it to the same elbow, and down. We're standing up straight and tall. The weight is directly underneath our chin, but not really resting, so it's a little bit of biceps work also but we're thinking about having our head up and our chest out. We're not curling forward into this squeeze. This is abs and obliques. <sighs> awesome job. Making sure you're breathing through every rep and grunting a little bit too. That's always okay. <laughs> really trying hard to get that knee all the way to your elbow. 20 seconds of rest coming up next. Ooh, snatches. Okay, I'm excited about this one. I'm actually, for round one, I'm gonna go with my big, big boy. Snatches are 100% momentum based and the work comes from your glutes. What you do is you have the weight down on the ground. You just need one of them. The weight's gonna start down on the ground and as you hoist it up, you are popping your hips to get the weight up over your head. If you feel this work, ugh, in your arms, I mean, some of it is arm work, but honestly, this is rear chain. This is your glutes and hamstrings powering your latissimus dorsi to swing the weight up over your head. If it feels like you are simply lifting the weight, first of all, drop weights because you won't be able to go as heavy. But second of all, really think about squeezing and powering this motion from your butt. I swear, I know it, how weird it sounds. I remember when I first learned how to do this. It's a very different movement than other things we do. We've got a couple of momentum-based 
exercises today. That, you guys, that was the whole circuit. Coming up next, we're doing squats to drinky birds again. Okay, we've lived through everything. <coughs> I'm gonna still go with my medium big boys. I can still do that for squats to drinky birds. Weights on your shoulders to get started for the squat. Coming down into a squat, all the way down as low as you can go. Bonus biceps curl. Come down into a drinky bird. Really think about that back leg pulling up, squeezing from your glute. I'm intentionally going a lot slower this time. I noticed on round one, I was, I was raring to go and I was really thinking about the timer here on round two, knowing that we still have one more round afterwards. Really think about excellent, excellent form. I mean, that's always, that's always what we're thinking about. But slow down for excellent form. Even if you can move a little bit faster, I'd much rather you err on the side of caution and good form with fewer reps. Okay, coming up next, letter X's, I'm definitely dropping. Okay, uh, can I still do those boys? Okay, on round two, I'm still gonna do these guys. My light big boys. They're not light. <laughs> Letter X is core is pulled in tight. Weights start right about your middle. We're gonna form the top of the letter X without swaying back at all. Back to middle, this is your resting position. I'm literally resting them on my waist right now. And then the lower half of the letter X. Take your time to squeeze the middle of your back every single rep. On the lower part, it's really easy to just swing your arms back and almost use your triceps. Your triceps are involved, they're always involved, but when you squeeze from your big, big, big back muscles, that's where we really see body shaping differences. Those big muscles in your back, like all big muscles in your body, they can get lazy and they can ask the smaller muscles, lower back, triceps, to do the work for them. Make them work, my friend. Okay, reverse lunge curls. I'm gonna keep these guys. I can do these. No, did I go heavier last time? Dang it, I went heavier. I'll go heavier. Medium big boys, here we come. Reverse lunge curls. Oh, yeah. We'll see, we'll see if I make this on round three. Elbows locked into your waist. It's a big, big, big step back. As we step back, we're here in a curl. And then down. This is another one, it's very easy to go fast. Really take your time here. We've got three rounds. We're certainly not trying to get 100 reps done. <sighs> Lots of grunting to be had, no matter how fast or slow you go. But making sure that you're managing your heart rate, frankly, is a big part of this workout. And I know that sounds so funny, we're not doing cardio. Whew, but my heart is actually pounding from the intensity. Intensity comes from duration, the length of the workout, the speed of the workout, or in this case with heavy weights, the toughness of the workout. <sighs> Excellent job, coming up next. Close squat swings. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go slightly lighter this time. I'm gonna go my light big boys, because that was really, really hard. Oh, this feels so light though, I wonder. Uh, I think I went heavy last time. I think I'm gonna go with my middle big boy. This feels better. Okay, so nice grip on it. Feet are close together. We're coming down in a twist. You're getting the weight behind your knee if you can. Coming up to your head and then down on the other side. Really taking your time. This is momentum based, but you can stop the momentum at any time, which I am doing. I'm making this less momentum based and more lifting work, <sighs> making sure that you're managing your heart rate, you're managing your core, you're managing your grip on this one for sure. And really thinking about what your body is doing. When we twist and then stand, you wanna make sure that your core is pulled in nice and tight, not letting your back sway as we stand up and pull that weight up. Okay. Oh, high knee peekaboos. Okay, you know what, I almost didn't make it last time. I am definitely dropping down to my big little boys for this one. It's plenty of work for me today. I'm feeling this work. High knee peekaboos means that we've got our elbows at shoulder height. 
hands just above your head. We're opening our elbows while pulling up one high knee, closing them back up again. And I'm super, super glad I went with lighter weight because I'm already shaking. This for me, honestly, one of the most difficult exercises. There is no resting position and you are employing every single muscle in your, basically your entire upper body, <sighs> including your core, of course, as we have weights overhead, making sure that your core is pulled in super, super tight, not letting your lower back volunteer or sway. <sighs> when it beeps in, it will. We get to rest. Awesome job. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, coming up next. Split stance, row and kickback. Okay, I'm gonna leave these out. I'm gonna come back to my small big boys though. This time, go ahead and go whichever way you would normally do a split stance. <laughs> whichever way you would normally step into a split stance is your dominant leg doing the work and that's why I had to do it the other way first time. All 10 toes pointed forward. We're leaning forward tiny, tiny bit. Back is straight, core is pulled in tight. Bring those weights up to your armpits, back to your hips, armpits and down. Keeping your elbows pointed backwards and super, super close to your body the entire time. Squeeze and breathe. When you relax your arms, it's really easy to kind of let your shoulders round forward. It's a resting position, but still thinking about having your shoulders pulled back into good posture will really help your core stay engaged the entire time. Squeeze and back to your armpits and down. Row and kick and step out of it nicely. Okay, you guys, coming up next. Uh, front raise, side raise, side kick. Okay, I'm hanging on to these boys. I think this is, yeah, this is the stretch where I hang on to these for a couple of exercises. So one arm is going to into a front raise. The other arm is going into a side raise. Whichever arm is doing the front raise is the leg that's doing the side kick. If this ends up being just too much for you, I mean, for one reason or another, Feel free to eliminate the side kick. You don't even have to kick all that high. Get your foot off the ground a little bit to really engage your abs and your core and work on the balance. You are also welcome to drop either the front raise or the side raise. I would suggest that you go across your body if you can, just because that's a little bit of challenge. Worst case scenario, I mean, drop your weights to something lighter so that you can use excellent form and do as much of the exercise as you can. <sighs> really thinking about squeezing from the sides of your glutes as you're raising that leg, not letting the work come up too high into your lower back. Oh my gosh, okay. Swinging knees to elbows. I can go slightly heavier for that. Oh. My hands are so sweaty. <laughs> Swinging knees to elbows. We've got our hands on the sides of the dumbbell. Elbows pointed forward. Weight is resting directly under your chin. Swing that knee up to your across your body on the same side of your body, elbow, and then down. And by swing, I don't mean use momentum. I mean squeeze from your abs. Abs and obliques doing this work. Glutes, of course, helping you stand carefully. Your standing knee is soft but strong. Both hip bones pointed forward the entire time. We're not curling or twisting our body into this. You're staying straight forward and it's your muscles that are bringing that knee across your body and then squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. So it's all abs and obliques and you know, a fair amount of grunting. You guys, the next exercise is snatches, which means that we will have made it through this circuit twice. You are doing such a good job. We've got just one more exercise in this round and then only one more round. I'm gonna try and go my heavy big boy again for snatches that was surprisingly doable. Not really surprising, my glutes are very strong. Make sure you're breathing. This one's all momentum, so your heart rate's gonna come up real high, but really thinking about excellent form the entire time. We don't have to do a ton of these. There is a pretty obvious resting position with the weight on the ground Ugh, in between. So if you need a couple of seconds to get your heart rate under control, absolutely. We're not trying to do a bunch. We're trying to do them well. 
by using your core and your glutes. Now here's the thing. I've spent most of this workout telling you not to sway your back and to be careful and squeeze. Momentum-based exercises, you're still not gonna sway your back, but it's gonna feel different. Your body's gonna be much more in motion. You're still controlling it though. It's fast, but it's fast control. Okay, okay, you guys. We made it through two rounds. We've got one more round. And I'm, oh man, I'm still gonna pick up the middle big boys for the squats to drink you birds. Oh, I do not want to. I do not want to, but I am capable. And this is the part where Paula starts complaining. You're welcome. Everybody enjoys this part. Okay, squat, I feel a little bit, just about hip width apart. Squat it down, all the way down. Ugh. Weights in front, down into a drinky bird. Yes, I very naturally went with my dominant leg first. I feel like this all evens out in the end on a three round circuit. I really don't worry very much about trying to do an exact number of reps on each side. I know that my core has worked very hard throughout the workout. And by focusing on form, I feel like that is probably the best thing I can do to even things out. Okay, you guys, that was the last of the squats to drinky birds. Coming up next, letter X's. Okay, I can still do, I can still do my little big boys. I don't wanna, but I can. I'm really, really strongly considering. Here we go with letter X is the top of the letter X. And the bottom of the letter X. I'm really strongly considering coming all the way down. I'm already thinking about those peekaboos. I'm really strongly considering coming all the way down to something significantly lighter for this round. Oh my gosh, because I know it's gonna hurt, but it's gonna be fine. Letter X is Core is pulled in tight. Knees are soft but strong. It's really easy to accidentally lock your knees when we're just standing here and not balancing because we've been doing so much balancing. But really thinking about your whole body having excellent form, not just the parts that are moving. When it beeps, 20 seconds of rest. Awesome job. Reverse lunge curls. That's me muttering and complaining. I can still do my middle big boys for reverse lunge curls. Get those elbows locked in to your waist. I'm gonna think really hard about stepping back with my dominant foot because that means that my non-dominant leg is doing the work first. Because I've noticed that every single one of these, without thinking about it, I've totally done my dominant everything first. It's funny how, it's funny how our body just has a way that it wants to move. <sighs> nice and slow and controlled. <sighs> These reverse lunges. Breathing. Not letting your arms swing. We're not hoisting. We're squeezing. Squeezing is very different from hoisting or shrugging. <sighs> Catch your breath each and every time. <sighs> it's not a race. When it beeps, we get to put these down. <sighs> oh, yes, thank goodness, okay. Oh, what did I use last time for close squat swings though? I think I still went with my middle big boy. <sighs> okay, I can do it, I can do my middle big boy. Close squat swings, we've got our feet close together, our hands on the big side of the dumbbells. Grip is part of this work. We're squeezing to come down, we're twisting down, and then pulling up. This is still doable. A <sighs> Little bit of momentum. It's basically like a kettlebell swing. I really should have explained that earlier. You are also, I mean, because I am stopping the momentum, it really is a forward raise. <sighs> if you have a more manageable weight though, you really are using your glutes as much as your arms to get that weight up to about your head or at least shoulder height. When we come down in this semi-squatted position, 
and stand up strong. It is amazing what kind of power your glutes have. They power everything. 20 seconds of rest, okay. I need picky boots, okay. We're getting them over with. What are you gonna do, Paula? What are you gonna do? You're gonna live through one more, one more interval. This is it. This is it. You're strong enough. You can do this. Okay, peekaboos. Peekaboo high knees, elbows in front of you. Gonna smile and pretend like this doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Now, actually, let me explain that just really quickly. Let me distract myself with that conversation. It should never hurt. It should be difficult. You should want to not be doing this anymore. You might feel shaky. It might feel achy. But if you feel pain, drop that weight immediately, my friend. Pain is a sign of something going wrong. Discomfort is to be expected. This isn't easy. You're working, working, working. <sighs> Some fatigue from that discomfort. Also, totally to be expected. But actual pain, pain like sharp, stabbing, squeezing, buzzing pain, drop those weights immediately. That is your muscles sending you a very clear signal that they cannot do this. <sighs> Split stance, row and kick back. You guys, you guys, this is what I was talking about, about relentless. Going back up a little bit. Whichever way you would normally step back, step back the other way. Non-dominant, all 10 toes facing forward. There's rest, but it's not a lot of rest. And the intervals, they're not that long. And we're rowing it up and squeezing it back. It's a triceps kickback. So up to your armpits, back to your hips, elbows pointed backwards, arms super, super, super close to your body. But there's just not a lot of time to get your heart rate under control. Not a lot of time to get your muscles under control. We're still making good choices and boy oh boy are we using excellent form here. Your neck is neutral. You're not hoisting or shrugging. You're squeezing from those big, big muscles in your back. Awesome job. And then those little tiny muscles in the backs of your arms. I know you all want to see some definition there, though. That's why I've included lots of triceps and biceps work this month. Ah, 20 seconds of rest. Okay. Front raise, side raise, side kick. I can still use these for the front raise, side raise, side kick. Whichever hand, I'm going to do the other side this time. I don't know why I keep going. Well, I do know why. <laughs> I do know why. It's easier that way. The front, whichever hand is doing the front raise is the leg that is doing the side kick. And then we're switching. Other hand goes front raise while that other leg does the side kick. Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing from basically every muscle in your body at this point, right? Your core is pulled in tight. Your glutes are doing a side kick. The glutes of the standing leg are taking care of all that balance. Your knee is soft but strong. Abs doing a whole lot of work, moving three limbs in three different directions. That's ab work, my friend. I know you feel it on the top of your shoulders. That's where I'm feeling it. But that's actually your abs. This is one of the ways that we can get visible abs from doing triplanal exercises like this where we're challenging our balance, our core, and everything else. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys, you guys. We're almost there. Swinging knees to elbows is next. I'm going to go my middle big boys. Whew, doggies. We've almost done this thing. Dare I say it wasn't that bad? It was. It was bad. <laughs> but it was also good, right? This is the thing. Swing your knees across your body on the same side of your body and down. Elbows pointed forward, head is up, chest is back, shoulders back. This is excellent posture. Pull in your core. That didn't touch. There we go. And there we go. Trying really hard to touch that knee to your elbow without bending down into it. Standing up straight and tall is what makes this so tough. This, again, how we get visible abs, one of the results that you are probably looking for this month. I know, I know how that goes. I like to see them too. A little bit of definition just feels really nice. And also, standing on one foot without falling over feels really nice, doesn't it? You guys, you guys, snatches, and that's it. We're finishing up round three, super duper strong. 
I'm gonna be able to use the big big boy all three rounds. I'm actually super proud of that because I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to even do it for one round, let alone all three. Here we go, momentum-based. Heart rate will come up. Ooh. Swing and grunt. Make your glutes do their job. This kind of power work, oh my gosh, is good for everything else that you could possibly want to do. When you have strong glutes, you have a strong body. Your glutes are part of your core, not just your abs. When your butt is doing its job, every other workout you do will be faster, better, and stronger. Like the $6 million man, when it beeps again, Oh my gosh, it's, well, it's the last time it's gonna be with a weight in our hands. <sighs> but of course, of course, I have a finisher for us. Okay, oh my gosh, okay. <sighs> okay, single leg side bends. I'm gonna start standing on my left leg. Your right leg is just a little bit off the ground. It doesn't matter where it is. Your hips are not moving. We're bending to the side and coming back up. So it's a tiny little motion. I know this doesn't look like much, but it's all abs all the time while we're balancing. It's exactly like doing side bends. If you wanna have a weight in your hand, by the way, I mean, you're welcome to it, I'm not. This balance work is hard enough without having something really pulling me over. We're thinking about our head up, our chest out. Excellent posture, your shoulders are back. We're not curling forward at all. We're bending to the side wherever you can get to. This is about your spinal flexion and your abdominal strength. Do not let your hip jut out. Both hips pointed forward, knee is soft but strong. Oh my gosh, 20 seconds of rest. All right, that was tough. That's what finishers are supposed to feel like, especially balance work after everything else that we've done. But here's the thing. This next interval is the very last interval, you guys. The very last interval of our last push day of this cycle. So your left leg is just flying, right leg is standing soft but strong. We're bending to wherever you can get to without letting your hip do anything else. Hips are stable, they're staying. Well, it would be stacked if you were sitting on your side. They are level with one another. Because what can happen if you come over too far? The hip that's farthest away will start to come up, up, up. Don't let the hip come up. And also try really hard not to fall over. <laughs> you know, just if you can. <laughs> the next time it beeps, you guys, really is the last time it's gonna beep today. Oh my gosh, what a good, good job you've done here. Stay focused. Oh my goodness. I am so proud of you and so shaky <laughs> and really looking forward to doing some arm circles oh, with nothing in my hands, you guys. We survived and that means that we get to look forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow is a recovery day. I love recovery days. I know. I know they're hard to do, I really do. Especially if you wake up and you're not like super sore, you're like, no, no, I could totally move, I can totally do more. Tomorrow we will be on our feet. I will not make you get down on the ground. We are gonna do some nice gentle movement, gentle stretching, gentle, gentle, gentle is the name of the game after a big push like this. Ah, <sighs> making sure you're eating for recovery. That means probably, probably above your baseline. If you do like to think about it, I will suggest that you think about protein. It's really good for building your muscles. There is, there is some evidence to suggest that eating relatively quickly after your workout is a good idea. I don't always feel like it. It's why I haven't mentioned it until now. That's, it's higher level athleticism stuff. But I'll be honest, I pretty much cannot stomach food immediately after exercising, so I, I do what I can to get the best results that I can. If you do feel hungry, a little proteiny snack after this kind of a workout is, is perfectly lovely. Let's go ahead and do some arm openers. Ah, stretch out your chest. And oh my goodness, arm closers, a big, big, big hug and pat 
on your sweaty back. Oh my gosh. You guys, I have an extended cool down here for you. I mean, I know, I know what today felt like. <laughs> I highly recommend that you have a little bit of extra stretching today, a little bit of extra TLC. When we have a big push like this, it's just good to be gentle to yourself, kind to yourself, recover, 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 my friends. And, and make sure that you push that subscribe button so that I'll see you tomorrow for recovery day.